I almost went the entire summer not using my oven, which is extremely difficult for me. When needing to cook a grand amount of food and not spend all day on it, oven is definitely the answer. Because I'd rather have a warm house for a few hours to have basically like 
a week's worth of meals done when the other option is standing over a stove every one of those days. I'm talking about when I really don't feel like cooking, which is truly a rare occasion for me. <laughs> Does anybody else argue with themselves? This week, we're doing some house cleaning. We are prepping all of our rooted vegetables that are like hiding in the kitchen. Any of our canned or bagged goods. And we're making a very delicious lemon rice that's very similar to a particular Indian rice, but slightly quicker. We're starting with our veggies as they're gonna take the most time to cook. I tend to forget to preheat my oven if I don't like start it right before I start prepping. So if you're like me, now would be a good time to preheat the oven. And adjust your oven racks because you have to be like Rambo if you're gonna try adjusting it after the preheating stage. Back to our rooted vegetables, which are like all that's on this tray. Therefore, if you're gonna add things like say, cauliflower or asparagus, consider adding them to, you know, a different tray. And that's just gonna make it easier when needing to remove them, you know, earlier than the rooted team. Some things to keep in mind when working with these rooted guys is, they're some pretty dense guys. So have a really sharp knife and keep the cuts uniform throughout. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I would say about a half inch is good to comply with the 30 to 40 minute cooking window. Notice we're really only seasoning these with nothing but fresh herbs. I would encourage you to add to or even change up my combination. For example, basil and you know mint are a few others that I have growing in my garden. And I think they would be a really good addition to something like this. While the tray is in the oven, we're gonna be getting our rice going. Any rice you wanna use really doesn't matter. Unless it's sticky rice, then don't use that one. So there's this really tasty lemon Indian rice called chitrana that we'll make official later on. But this recipe is loosely based off that. Nothing fancy up front with the rice. We're just gonna cook that up front according to the package instructions. Then we're making a sauce to stir in. And if you haven't cooked with mustard seeds before, well, let's say they kind of jump. Yeah, like a kangaroo or bunny or me whenever I get another subscriber, but don't tell anybody. Actually, more like popcorn, but when these pop, there's no puffball at the end. Just the reaction of you being surprised, although you completely knew it was going to happen. If you don't have black mustard seed, something more common might be like regular mustard seed, yellow or brown, or even mustard powder. The recipe won't be exactly like it was if you use black mustard seeds, as they are pungent and spicier in flavor. Oh, and don't overdo the lemon zest or the ginger, or your taste buds are in trouble. Whatever you do with this recipe, do not forget the chickpea portion. Say if you need to make the meal quicker due to the lack of time that you have. You could completely just do the rice and the chickpea portion of this recipe and be completely happy. Cooking the chickpeas themselves is pretty self-explanatory, but there's two things I like to do that I guess we could say aren't clearly apparent. The first one, I like to cook the chickpeas until crispy. You know the chickpeas are good and crispy when they change from that beige original hue to more of a golden brown. Completely a personal preference as I like texture differences within my meals. The second thing I like to do is toast my spices. Here, we're adding in the chickpeas first so we don't burn the spices. But once I get the spices in, I like to leave that and the chickpeas in there for just a little bit to get a good toast on those spices. Lastly, if you're a sauce person, eating veggies and rice by themselves could seem a bit like something's missing. 100% it's the sauce, 100% it's the sauce. There's a tahini sauce that I like to make that goes really well with this. I'll put that recipe here on screen. So this is like a sauce I love making with my falafels. Wait, I don't think we've made falafels together yet. This full recipe can be found and printed at my website, makeitdairyfree.com or visit the link down in the description. Check out my socials if you haven't already where we can catch up a little bit more personal. Thank you so, so much for watching and your support. I truly appreciate you. Until next time, believe in good. Peace.